Oh man, your mod is so big. So I gotta tell you guys something. Uh, my house is normally quiet as a mouse after midnight. And uh, so I got convinced into to doing these reviews by a lot of friends and, and a lot of people online saying, hey, you got a lot of information and you're passionate about it. Why don't you share it? So uh, normally my house is quiet. And uh, since I started trying to do this, <laughs> It never fails. I get partially through it, and there's a cricket going. I get partially through it, and uh, <laughs> folks start walking through. Uh, it is what it is. I've got a big family. Uh, so anyways, to get to what I want to talk to you about tonight, and that's battery safety. A safety. Safety. I can talk. Um, there's been a lot of conversations online in the chat rooms and everything else about a lot of people who are starting out uh, with RBAs and a lot of people buying their first mechanical mods, which is great. Uh, there are so many options out there for vapors. You should do it. You should try it. Give it. I mean, give it a shot. But there are some things to consider, and that particularly is battery safety. There is one aspect to um, vaping that can be dangerous if you're not safe, and, and you know, particularly more sub ohmish but we're going to go ahead and, and treat it all the same when it comes to battery safety um, I've been in electronics for 20 years of my life I have licenses to back it up um, so uh, I've seen bad things happen to electronics batteries and everything but typically a bigger scale but this is small and it still hurts you um, so what we're going to talk about is uh, one how to check voltage current and resistance uh, and and actually find out where your power or watts can come out to a website that I would recommend that you find is www.onlineconversions.com forward slash ohms underscore law dot html uh, don't worry I'm gonna put a link below but I'm just giving credit where credits due this is their conversion chart not mine but it's using the ohms law which anybody in the science field this is it so the main two things that you need to find out before you get started is how much voltage am I putting out and what my resistance is so let's talk about this voltage and I'm gonna start with a pretty popular brand battery is the eFest 2000 mAh milliamp hour or ma this is an IMR18650 3.7 volt. No, well, that just told me how much my volts is. Now it says 3.7, but you want to start off with 4.2. Typically a fully charged battery like this will start at, at 4.2. Um, that would be in, in a mechanical mod. Now, if you're using something like the VAMO DNA20 or a VTR you want to use whatever voltage you're going to set it at so for instance this is a 1.2 resistance and I'm using 5.9 volts so that's the information I actually need to put in there and that's actually a 1.1 it just kind of varies I guess on when I hit it it's the only thing I've noticed about the VTR that happens is it adjusts by 0.1 uh, on the resistance, not a big deal. So anyways, um, we're going to go with 5.9 volts and my resistance on my coal is 1.1. So, how do we use this? We go to that website, we type into the voltage section 5.9, you want to verify on the right that the little bubble for volts is checked or bubbled in. And then you're going to skip current, go to resistance, and you're going to put in that 1.1 which on here is going to say A1.1 that is actually your resistance so if I put that in I'm going to skip power and hit calculate what information does it give me now? well those two fields the current and power are now filled in with some information current says 5.36 that's the amps that's using so that's the main important one right there in my book which is how many amps is it drawing from the battery 
is drawing 5.36363636, so we'll open, we say 5.37. You can Google this, and there are plenty of review guys out there that have battery charts, but you want to just Google EFEST IMR18650 rating. Pretty simple. You'll find in there some information on a Google site. And I'll do this while I'm with you. So, um, looks like uh, tasterjuice.com has a battery information page after you do that. And on his page, it says EFEST. Looks like uh, 2000 Ma MAH is rated at 10 amps. Okay. So the numbers say 5.7 is what I'm using, and we have 10 amps rating, so I'm right in the middle. I'm good. Is there a range there? Technically, in the electrical world, uh, they say 75% use is what you should do on electronics. So um, me personally, that's where I'm going with. I don't want to overdo um, any kind of battery. If you're going to get into super sub ohming, whatever, um, if, however you want to decide what super ohm, sub ohming is, for me, that's the stuff that's below 0.5 ohms. You want to definitely get you a better grade battery than this, in my opinion, because uh, some of you guys can build some crazy crap, and hey, it vapes great. You love it, go for it. I personally, I like my stuff about 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and I even like the 0 0.1, uh, the 1.1 1 .1 on this little uh, little dripper here. I won't get into all that. But anyway, so battery safety. What if I didn't follow those steps and I made a coil that was 0.2 and I was running 6 volts? Well, let's just check this out. So resistance. I'm now going to clear out this field. I'm going to use my 5.9 because, well, actually we'll just go straight battery. 4.2 resistance, 0.3, we'll just go crazy here, we'll calculate that up. Okay, so now my current amps that's going to draw is 14 amps. This can only handle 10, so I'm 4 over. What does that mean? I'm going to overheat my battery. What happens then? It begins to vent. This has a chemical. The batteries are typically chemical reactions that causes power. So when it vents, it's releasing a gas. If you had something that you ordered online, and I will be doing a review on this private made by Grand Vapor, and, it, and this may be only mine, it seems that's the way it has been. I've seen a lot of people that not had this issue, but this mechanical mod has no holes in it. There's typically a hole here and a hole here on this particular device. They forgot to put it on mine. So if I wasn't paying attention, I put this in, I was running 14 amps, I have now made a pipe bomb, um, which is very dangerous. So what happens? The battery begin to overheat, it vents, the gas gets trapped in this chamber, and slowly but surely it will fill up until the point that it ruptures. If this happens to you and you didn't take the precautions in place, yes, you can hurt yourself and you can hurt people around you. What do you do if you notice this is happening? Well, one quick way to find out is that one, it's going to be super hot. Once you notice, even if you have a mod that has vents on it, like the Cool Fire 1, um, or even the Nemesis, it has um, hair, air holes around the lock ring. If you notice that your mod is getting hot, I recommend you put it as far away from you as po possible. Uh, my last Cool Fire video, I said chunk it out the back door. I still stick with that. Me personally, I don't want to hurt any of my three kids. Uh, any anybody around me it's just not worth it so you want to put it away uh, from anybody that can be harmed and allow that to vent or if it's going to explode 
I would get it as far away as possible let it do its job yes you're going to lose your battery yes you're going to lose your mechanical mod but it's a lot better than losing fingers hands face you know you only get body parts once in your life um, it's not worth trying to find replacements so it's a lot easier to replace this than it would be me because I like me so uh, lesson learned make sure you get batteries that can handle what you're doing always check don't guess always check what the amp rating is going to be you should always check what the current slash amp rating is going to be with the amount of voltage that you're going to use and the amount of resistance you're going to use those two things are your responsibility to do you're not going to have somebody sell you a product and then go home and then them tell you hey that coil you built, you built yesterday was bad they're not going to know is it their fault? no anything that is RBA is at your own risk and uh, almost everything you buy online will tell you that so um, what are some ways that you can do if you don't want to take that risk well that's to find an electronic mod uh, like a, a variable voltage variable wattage that can do you know a little bit smaller volts like one ohm uh, I think the VAMO is 1.5 don't quote me on that I've not played with the VAMO yet but I have played with an ITACE VTR and I know it will run point Let's see, I think my last build on here was 0.7 ohms. So I can vouch that it will do sub ohms. It only does it up to 15 watts. So it's not a great sub ohm uh, device because there's a lot of people who do sub ohms and want a higher wattage than 15 watts. If it done 20 watts, that probably would have been really good if they had allowed that. Matter of fact, they would have sold a lot more of these. I was kind of sad that it did sub ohm but not higher wattage but that's that's for a later review so what does this do this has protection in it built to protect those who are using uh, devices like that because it's only going to allow so much current to be drawn through here um, I believe some people stated that it was 4 amps is what they found out so that's what it's going to let you do so if you want to build your own and you're just starting out it's probably not a bad idea to start out trying to build 1.5 uh, ohm coils um, or even uh, 2 ohm coils pro tanks use 2 ohm coils and matter of fact most pro tanks that I've rebuilt uh, with uh, eco wool or cotton has come out better than the factory um, they hold up longer and, and they just taste better I, I don't know what they're using at the factory but it's not as good as what I'm using here so guys be safe that's all this video is about is uh, battery safety uh, and if you're interested in getting to the RBA world which is the drippers and stuff like that um, you can have like this is the 1.1 running at 5.9 amp uh, volts you can still get a decent cloud and impress your friends and I didn't make any modifications to this guy I just set it up however it was so yeah it, I mean it still still chucks out the vape it's good So you don't have to immediately go, oh man, I'm going to start out doing sub-ohms, I'm going to get on it. No. If you've got a VTR, you got a VAMO, you got something that'll do 1.5 and higher, start out with it. Have a little bit of fun. This is a dripper. It's fun. I'm having a good time with it. As a matter of fact, I set this up to see how it do because a, a guy online uh, was asking. Um, some information about a setup just like that so I set it up just so I could find out what it would be like it's good puts out the vape that was a single coil with some cotton and uh, some six milligram tombstone that's actually 70 PG and 30 VG 
pretty dang good for being low uh, VG if you ask me. Anyways guys, appreciate you watching me again. Hope you enjoy the video. Hope it helps you stay safe. If you have any questions, you can find me at TC Reviews on Facebook. Um, I'm typically on. Check you out next time.